If I had done this intentionally or unintentionally, I'd be the first one to step up and say, I did it. I truly believe in my heart and I would bet my life that this substance never entered my body at any point. The more you think about it, the more disappointing. I think disappointing is a, a great word for the game for, and for all the things that went on around this. And as one of the guys who defended Ryan Braun after the things, that it's, it's an unbelievably disappointing. Well, Ryan Braun did come clean this week. He is out for the rest of the season, suspended, another black eye for baseball. There is more to come. We want to get the latest now from George Will, Jeremy Schapp of ESPN. And Jeremy, a lot of rumors swirling around Alex Rodriguez uh, as well. Many others. What's your best reporting on how far this is going to reach and when it's all going to break? Well, well, we all think sometime in the next couple of weeks, maybe a little bit longer, Alex Rodriguez and up to about 20 other players in the majors and the minors will be suspended. Rodriguez is a special case because... He's uh, fighting it, right? He, he's fighting it in the media right now in New York, but it's presumed that he's also fighting it with Major League Baseball. There's the possibility of a lifetime ban because not only does baseball believe that he was cheating, not only does it believe that he lied to them about it, but it also believes they tried to undermine its investigation. So he's a special case. Lifetime ban, George, that would certainly signify uh, baseball seriousness about cleaning this up. The sea change here, the real seriousness, now on the part of the players themselves. George, in 2011, the Brewers played the Diamondbacks in a five-game playoff. They beat the Diamondbacks three games to two. In that series, Ryan Braun was 9 for 18, bet at 500. Four doubles and four RBIs. He was sensational, and he almost certainly was cheating. Now, the players on the Diamondbacks know he took money out of their, uh, out of their pocketbooks. And the Players Association has changed in response to the, their constituency, the players themselves, which for years the Players Association treated this as a privacy issue, a civil rights issue, this resistance to testing. One of the leaders of the Players Union said it's like smoking cigarettes. It's a bad habit, but of no concern to anyone else. The players have changed their minds. Agree with that? It's, it's totally changed. The leadership has changed at the Players Union. Uh, the rank and file thoughts, uh, thinking about this has changed entirely. Uh, and that, that is an essential element here. But, but it's still worrisome that there's no real deterrent the way there is in some other sports like track and field and cycling. Uh, it was Pete Rose who knows something about crime and punishment who said the other day up in Cooperstown, uh, there aren't too many people who wouldn't take the deal that Ryan Braun seems to have made, which is you get $120 million and you give back $3 million. So uh, until baseball approaches this with even greater punishment, and it's doing a better job than the other pro leagues, we're still going to have this problem. It does suggest, George, that some, someone is going to have to get a real <clears throat> permanent uh, ban because, as Jeremy points out, Ryan Braun could be back next year making a whole lot of money. Well, in, in a subsequent collective bargaining agreement with the players, you may find that there'll be a, a, a mechanism for voiding contracts, voiding the, I don't know how many uh, <clears throat> scores of millions of dollars R Braun still has coming. About 120 uh, million. 88 million for R Alex Rodriguez. If you can void contracts, that's the hammer. We only have about a minute left, George. I got to get you on a big change. For your favorite baseball team, the Chicago Cubs, Wrigley Field, now going to have a Jumbotron. Jumbotron and some advertising. The problem is Wrigley Field has been a little baseball Williamsburg, a quaint little artifact, but not serious. And the Cubs find that they, unless they can generate more revenue, they can't compete with the more modern venues to put a better team on the field. They really had no choice, did they, Jeremy? Well, they had no choice, but uh, some of the people who have the rooftop exposure looking into Wrigley Field are a little bit upset about this. You know, how many signs they put up, how many scoreboards they put up uh, is of less consequence, obviously, than the lack of pennants they put up. <laughs> Sorry, Will. Jeremy Chef, thanks very much for your insight this morning.